podcast that I've been listening to. It's called Number One Dad. You haven't heard of it, had you? No. I think it's like, I don't know who's doing it. But it was the so it's hosted by this guy named Gary Veter. He's a comedian who's open for like Gary Nate Bargatze. Gary V. Nate Bargatze, Sam Morrill. Is that who it is, Gary V? No, his name's Gary Veter. And uh, so when he was growing up, his dad was a con man. I'm already in. Like a real ass con man. Neil Caffrey type shit. Or more of like, what's the guy Neil Caffrey hates? I don't know. Like his competitor, they do the wine bottle. Yeah, like that kind of what's shit. The guy, what, what was that guy's name? I don't know, but stuff like that. Not Keller. He's like a Keller type guy. Jason Keller. J- okay. Anyway, sorry. But more, but also, but more into like a. He's like a blue collar Keller, I would say, a BCK. So, no, but that that's Keller was the blue collar Neil Caffrey. Then it's exactly yeah. what it is. So you know, for like when this when Gary was growing up, you know. He would sometimes be, like, involved in these cons. Sometimes he knew he was. Sometimes he didn't. But, like, the biggest con that he and his dad ever pulled off together was that when Gary was in fourth grade, they pretended that he was a kid's reporter for Sports Illustrated for kids. And so they got access to the locker rooms at Madison Square Garden for Knicks games, uh, who plays there? The Rangers, yep. right? Rangers games, and so he, so his dad would pretend to be the photographer, and they would go and they'd be like, "Hey, this kid is with you know Sports Illustrated for kids." He, so he's got pictures with like uh, Lemieux, right? That's how, Mario Lemieux, Mario, Le, Mario Lemieux, Patrick Ewing, Michael Jordan. They were sitting courtside for Jordan's fifty-five point game at the Garden. At the Garden. So that was like the the big one that they pulled off together. So then uh, when he was 15, he cut off contact with his dad because his parents had this, I mean, his dad basically ruined his entire family's life. Like yeah, that's he, what happens when they got divorced. No love in the con game, man, dude. So this, so now this podcast is about, is like about him trying to track down his dad and see like where he is now. Talk to him about the past, like see what's going on and stuff. And dude, you know, has I, he found him? Uh, yeah. You still yeah. conning? Yeah. <laughs> it's I because a new episode I just listened to it today. Cause, so so the, the last week's episode, like he finally finds his somebody. He talks to a rabbi. A rabbi like gets him his dad's phone number, and so he finally like gets on the phone with his dad. <laughs> Dude. First thing his dad said is like, "Oh, it's good to hear from you. You know, a lot of stuff happened back then. Uh, I have no regrets." <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy because his dad, like, there's there's a there's a part of the podcast where you know Gary uh, is visiting his mom, and he's like, he, and he tells her that I'm I'm looking, I'm looking for, for my dad. dad, and it's why the audio of that is wild because she doesn't say a word you just hear her literally dropping her silverware so they're eating lunch dropping her silverware and then it cuts out and gary's like my mom is still so like traumatized by what happened back then she doesn't even want to be on tape like talk like mm-hmm. anything mentioning him because you know dude this is how crazy so so his dad has been uh either the plaintiff or defendant in 23 court cases at least throughout his life including their divorce proceedings where he represented him he represented himself Matthew hell yeah and he got the house and this is back in like the late 80s or early 90s right like the guy never, never gets the, the, the house, house. the yeah. guy to this day still like the guy never gets the house and he still has it and it's it's a it's wild, and then they talk about like Wait, the biggest. Can, can, I, can we please, take one time out? Please, his dad still has the house. Yes, his so dad how, still has the house. It should have been the easy. It should have been a one episode podcast. I found my dad. He, no, because <laughs> he didn't know if his dad was still in the house, and then he does this whole, dude. They do this stakeout at the house because the first the first thing he does he's like I, I think my dad because he talks to some people and he's like okay so my dad might be living in this house so he calls the that phone number and. That part's crazy. He doesn't end up getting a hold of his dad that way, but that part of the podcast is, like, wild. And then, um, so then he does, like, a, so he contacts the phone company, and they're like, well, it was a couple years ago, but his name was on a bill 
you know, for a landline at this house. And so he does this whole stakeout of his childhood home. And you know something? I knew his dad was living there. Because you got to catch a con man. You got to think like like a con con man. And I knew his dad was still living there because, um, you know, his dad's like uh, in his 60s or 70s or whatever at this point. And there's like um, kids' bikes and like wagons in the front and backyards and stuff. And I'm like, okay, that's – because when Gary was a kid, people would come to the house and like – pound on the door like asking his you know because his dad like owed them money yeah. and stuff like that and the biggest con though that his dad pulled was he ran this um uh payphone company and he basically like told people that he was uh part of at&t and he wasn't so that ends up going in the, there's all these crazy details come out it's there's this huge lawsuit obviously it's one man versus AT and T, and did he represent himself? Of course he did. Hell of yeah. course he did, and uh, he won. He he won. It's crazy how he won. You got to listen to the podcast. But it's Matthew. It's so fascinating. I can't recommend it enough because I heard what's it called? It's called Number One Dad. I'll gotcha. send it to you. But I I was like, well, I'm just I I honestly thought I was only going to be interested in the Sports Illustrated for kids stuff because that story's crazy. That's like the story you heard about. And that's yeah, what yeah. Do it, okay. And uh, that's like the first episode of the show is all about that. And maybe some of the second, but then I'm like totally hooked now. And the last and the episode that just came out today, he sits down at lunch with his dad, and it's it's crazy. It's I mean, yeah, it's it's I'm it's so hey, fast. We're live to tape. Well, dude, that's it. Because again, his dad is like always on the lookout for yeah, people like recording him or yeah. or tracking him and things like that. And that's the other thing. Gary's telling stories about his dad being like, or people rather, because Gary sometimes he's he's trying to track down his dad, so he's calling people who knew him. And so he talks to this one guy, and he's like, "Yeah, your dad came over one time. He's doing some work for me." He's like, "Yeah, they're fo- oh, it was the rabbi." The rabbi's like, uh, hey, how's everything going? You know, Manny is the dad's name. And Manny's like, oh, hey, rabbi, things are going okay. They're following me. And, you know, you hear somebody say that. It's like, oh, man, this guy's having a fucking psychotic break. And he's like, and Manny's like, yeah, you know, that car across the street, you watch. As soon as I get out of here, they're going to be right behind me. And the rabbi's like, he left my office. I'm looking out the window. Sure enough, that car fucking voom zoots right down the street as soon as he goes. It's like, holy shit. What kind of life is They're this? Watching. And this is like, again, you know, I mean, he's he's not Neil Caffrey. He's Keller. Yeah. So he's not like this crazy international art con man type thief. Like, he's just a regular guy. And the, the amount catch of shit. Catch me if you can that, type con man. A kind of catch me if you can type guy. Just, but it is... It's a it's a case study in so many different angles. Tony Dinozo's dad. It's got to be exactly like that. It's pretty much exact. This guy's got Dinozo running through his veins without a doubt. But it's Dude, a fascinating I, podcast, and I feel like more people should be talking about it because I can't get enough of it. It's so good. <laughs> I am obsessed with the life of con men. Dude, what a what a crazy crazy it's such life. A, because you know that's something that you think that's, today that's, there's no way you could pull off. Like I mean, I feel that's like why Neil Caffrey got arrested the first time because he told a lie to Kate, and Kate was like, "You just tried to con me. I'm fucking out of here." Yeah, but that but it's it's a uh, it feels like a lost art, which probably works in the con man's favor, dude, because. Whenever, I mean, even uh, when I was talking with Faz about this, and I've told other people about that podcast, and I think whenever you talk about, like, cons from back in the day and stuff like that, people, a big part of the part of that conversation eventually always goes down to, well, you can never get away with that today. You know, with phones and cameras I, I everywhere. I think that's true, though. Well, but to a certain extent. like because To a certain extent, but it's a lot less of an extent than well, I think you would initially well, no, but being imagine. a real-life con man and being a TV show con man, I feel like are two pretty different things. Oh, 100%. But I'm talking about real-life con man yeah. stories. Yeah. To this day. That's, I mean, I mean not to this day, but people well, will because real say, life, can Because like, you now. could be a real-life con man, and you could doesn't mean you have like multiple identities and stuff. You know? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? You're just running different businesses. But it is ultimately harder, I think, to keep your paths uncrossed right if you're running two different scams at the same time oh that reminds me so he finds his dad's old facebook page profile picture 
him and Joe Biden. Scrolling through other photos, him and Trump, him and Barack Obama. Like his dad is just yeah, that's, somehow getting access man. to all these presidents. Yeah. Like, I know. It's crazy, dude. Like that's, yeah. I mean, again, you say there's no way you could give away with this today, but con men find a way, dude. Con, men, con men. The con finds a way. Yeah.